So, when you talk about awakening, um, you've talked a, a few times about the self mm -hmm. and um, remembering the self and coming back to the self and dissolving the self into the greater self and you know all that the, mm -hmm. the small self into the greater self mm -hmm. the drop into the ocean mm -hmm. um, this is uh, language you know words that are used by um, I've heard like for example uh, Alan Watts use those kind of words uh, drop into the ocean I think Osho also uh, and Rumi yeah. um, and uh, and then you have uh, people like Eckhart Tolle who use different language talking about uh, the present moment mm -hmm. um, and uh, Eckhart Tolle a quote from him for example is that awakening is awakening from the dream of thought mm, yeah. right and um, it kind of uh, you kind of think okay awakening from the dream of thought into your experience of here and now mm -hmm. in a certain way yeah. um, so it's it, it almost seems if you're just looking at the language like there's two kinds of awakening there's like the no, uh, it's waking the same. up no it's the same the here and now the present moment is the self the here and now is all that is there's the waking up to the self or to oneself or to the here and now because there's no separation of the space and time and being and environment and all of these things so the field of ex the field of existence is the here and now and each moment, and this is why the waking up is each moment. It's not, the waking up is in the here and now. The here and now is like a flowing stream. It's living. It's not something we did yesterday or something someone did 2,000 years ago or like that. And we're, and we're repeating something from the past. The awakening is the fresh, alive, and, uh, and, and vibrant each moment. And so it's not... Otherwise, we think like, okay, I'm going to climb the mountain, and then like, I did it, okay, in 2006, I climbed the mountain, and that's it. It's like, what? You know, so, so that, it's, it's the mountain. If there's a mountain, the mountain is each moment. If there's a mountain, then the mountain is each moment, and the mount, but the mountain is also not my personal mountain. Not everyone's climbing their own little mountain like this, right? The, uh, <clears throat> so the mount, it's impersonal, it's the moment. So when we're, or it's like the waves, it's like a surfer learns to ride different waves. Then, So the, the presence, the skillfulness, when we talk about skillful means, which is developed through wisdom, which is developed through the silence and through the, the purification and stillness. I talk about the, the foundations of stillness, the path of stillness, and the teaching of stillness as being sufficient to bring about all the other mechanisms that need to unfold. Just the stillness, then all the other shit is coming up and the purification and the concentration and the transcendence. So we, um, so the, the, what we're working with, the, everything is the here and now. The garden of life is the here and now. So the, so the whole of yoga is the same way that a sculptor trains to be able to carve the wood or that a musician trains to play music of the thing, then the yogi or the spiritual aspirant is training to, to, to dance in the here and now or to make the here and now a poetry or, so, or, or a, a love song. Or not. It's, it's, it's the crafting the presence in the here and now. Everything is that. It, Nobody cares about certificates of what you did yesterday or a few years ago or anything like that. It's inconsequential. So the real test of our depth and our realization is not in using words or talking about the past, but in our presence moment to moment. Do you, um, do you feel like the, the present moment is a doorway to um, realizing the self? Is it is it almost like a, a path that you go, you come into the present moment and then you can realize the, the present self. moment is all that there is. Everything mm -hmm. other than the present moment is falsehood. So either we're caught in the false through thinking or through obsessing or desiring or through these different means, or we're in the present. So that everything happens in the present: happiness, joy, sex, life, death. Everything is in the present. Everything when we're not. Everything out of the present is false, is unreal. So as long as we want to play with the unreal, dance in the graveyard, and be stuck in the concepts, then it's not possible to realize the self. So, so instead of looking at it as the, the present moment is, um, 
is where you can realize the self. It's more of the present moment is the self. It's almost yes. like synonymous. Yes, they're synonymous. That's mm. the, yeah. The present moment and the self are the same. Ah, that's 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 yeah. That's yeah. that's the core of, of my question really that I that I wanted to answer. And I'm glad yes. that we. Yes, because okay. otherwise it's like. Oh, then the self is still, it's like our concept of God. It's some dude sitting in a chair somewhere else. Yeah. You know, then the self is somewhere else, right? Or it's a separation and it's not just, it's a, not just somewhere else, but it's a person, you know, still we want to see the self as a person. We want the self to be a person with some kind of human like form. And uh, we want it to be something we can show off or something, something to share with people, you know, because we're, we're habituated, our patterns, all of our interaction is manipulation. And we're, and we're habituated to getting these uh, feedback from other people in our nervous system and our, and our uh, likes and dislikes and the way that we psych ourselves up. So then we want to do that with the, the self also. But the self is not a thing and it's not in another place and it's not separate from space the fabric of existence. The self is the very fabric we can call paramatma or like this. So in order to get to the self, then instead of working with words, we need to first work with the elements and dissolve the elements. We must first uh, investigate and embody the earth, fire, air, and water very deeply in terms of the outer world, the inner world, the psyche, the, the will in, the, in the, what we call the vital being, the willpower, drive, desires, how the elements are working and in the body in the subtle body in the gross body <clears throat> and then when we're able to to uh to connect and balance the elements then we go to the space then we dissolve all those into space now that space we can say is also the self so when we talk in meditation of dissolving everything back into the inner sky this inner space with no beginning no end we can't touch it we can't see it but it's containing everything like this so the, the self is, is like this, is what's left when all the elements dissolve back into space. And then when space dissolves back into the seed of itself as well. Space as well. This is one level of self, of course, is the space uh, from which all the elements are born. But even space itself is beyond and the beyond and beyond. So <clears throat> there are many different positions that we could still call self. In the same way, there, yoga can be referred to as many things. Yoga is the... Yoga is the state of, of, of union consciousness. Yoga is also the path for attaining the state of union consciousness. Yoga is also the four yogas, bhakti, karma, jnana, and, and raja yoga. Yoga is also the sadhana that we do as part of the yoga. And then yoga is also the asanas, the hatha yoga, which what most people refer. So we have this ambiguity of yoga, which is referring to many different layers. Also, we have this ambiguity of self, which can still be true at, at, at many layers that are still transcendental to our individual limited thing. But, and this is when we have the Sankhya philosophy where they have the different divisions and the planes of being, Purusha, Prakriti, and then Paramatma, and then like this, hmm. the elements. So <clears throat> it's important that we, that we ground our understanding of self with the, this hmm. knowledge. So uh, that's, that's amazing. Um, I've heard people say, uh, use the word true self, uh, uh when referring to this uh, kind of thing. Yes. And, um, to me, I, I, I don't like the word true self personally, because mm. it, it sounds uh, uh, like the, all the other selves are untrue. Mm. Um, yes. what, what do you think about that? Do you, is it, is there like a true self that is the all containing Brahman or something like that? Or, or are these all true selves, all these levels? Or is it the, the whole of it that is the true self? Or is it, would you just not use uh, the word? Again, we have this, I mean, true again is a trans, can be translation for absolute and relative. We have absolute truth and relative truth. Mm -hmm. So truth is also a satya. Like in English, truth has this weird connotation because it's the truth that comes through doubting and experimentation and learning. Not the truth that, the seed of truth which keeps bearing fruit of itself through this, uh, through the deep uh, inner knowing. So this kind of truth, this satya, this jnana, this this truth, um, can the self the, the self is that nature. You know, we can see the self through many different angles. We can see it as all powerful, all truthful, all present, all knowing, right? So depending on which angle we see the self, then the self is that. It's not a quality of the self, but the self is that all uh, truthfulness. So I think it's important because in the 
modern times we have this kind of very individualist like i want to do it my way kind of thing i'm going to figure out and work it out so then it becomes like my truth and then it's the becomes very uh it's very easy to get uh to uh get trapped or lost along the way so i think that uh that there is an aspect of of coming back to the ultimate truth and uh, uh letting go like this neti neti again of all the different conditioned uh, layers of relative truth. Mm. Though we may resist this idea of uh, the one true way because it's not like religion, like this is the true way and this is the true God, this kind of truth. But it's the truth that is the seed from which all emerges. Mm. You know, truth not in like the, like A plus B equals C kind of truth, but truth in the sense of this ultimate source of all creation and being in form and time mm. uh, so would you see that 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 source like you're saying living truth. As, would you see that as as the truth or and and then uh what we see the multitude of things that come from that source as untrue or false in a certain way or well would... that's what they've called maya that they've called relative truth or like this i mean they're both at they're both those are both manifestations of truth which trans which are transcended in the beyond of that as well but it's a definitely a useful intermediary step in which to work through the layers of ignorance that in general we're all completely uh, wa washed away by. so so looking at at the the multitude and the maya the as, one and as, the many we can call right the many looking at them. the many as as falsehood in a certain way you would say is a skillful means at, through which to come to the source through, to, through which to come to the one rather than actually saying that like ontologically this is true and this is falsehood again true and false are always relative terms too it's in relation to what and within what framework so it depends on the framework that we're working within of course the spirit and matter we can say are the one and the many are both two like two sides of the same coin that are inseparable and that the creativity of the spirit is expressed in the matter and the matter's essence is expressed in the spirit and the one and the many and there's and the and life itself or this 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 uh creation and existence is this like a dynamic um dance of a shiva and shakti mm -hmm. so we don't it's not we're not wanting to to permanently cut off our arms and head and stuff but also we have to cut off our arms and head in the in the on the way because of the of the habit of attachment to i to the form and identification with the form which comes not only from the human births and incarnations but from the previous incarnations and all the other stages of life like elements and the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom so there's been a a, a very deep level of attachment to identification with the immediate form and the past experience. So in order to, to smash through that, there needs to be a, a period of training in which we experiment with that. The same way that athletes will create a certain conditions to train in order to overcome a certain weaknesses or difficulties um so we're just talking about like um you know the one and the many and and all that stuff the duality non-duality and the elements and uh, are any of these um understandings necessary for awakening or do these nothing is necessary that? for awakening mm. no and it's and it shouldn't be Awakening can't come if we're like sitting there at the door like wait like checking everyone for it. it It has to be there has to be a letting go the awakening is like a relaxing the ultimate relaxing back into being it's a let it's so it's The tight the sadhana, you know that the purpose